Hello again. Uh, my name is Doug, and I am your host today for this week's Rocksmith Developer Stream. Uh, I am also the community developer for Rocksmith, and I welcome you uh, to this week's Rocksmith Indigo Girls Song Pack Stream. Uh, today we're going to look at the three songs in the Indigo Girls Song Pack. Uh, we're going to give away some prizes, we're going to talk about music, uh, and it's, it's going to be fun. So uh, we're going to take a quick look at the, uh, the Indigo Girls Song Pack, and we'll be back with more right after that. All the ghosts from your head are stronger than the monster beneath your bed, smarter than the tricks played on your heart. Look at them together, then we'll take them apart. Adding up the total of all of that's true. Multiply life by the power of two. That's not metal. Uh, three <laughs> songs from the Indigo Girls. Uh, and to play them, I would like to uh, introduce our first couple of guests. Hello, Andrew Levin. Yeah. How's it going? Do you have a microphone? Uh, I do. Oh yeah, there, there we go. There yeah, now it's on. Great. Yeah. Uh, and that is an acoustic guitar, but it is semi-hollow? Yeah. So it's, it's close. Yeah. And, and what's that? But, 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 but Emmy does have an acoustic I bass. I do. I do have an acoustic bass. Has the acoustic bass been seen on the stream before? Not that I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's really fun to play. I yeah. don't know if it's made it up here or not. So I've been as. No. Uh, do we know much about this bass? Uh, mostly that Pody picked it out. Okay. It's an affordable bass. Yeah. And it's a mahogany. It's very pretty, and it sounds very pretty. Um, so yeah, this isn't metal. No. This isn't metal at all. This is uh, we've got three folk rock songs. Uh, now you did note track the first song that we're going to play, which is closer to fine. Yes. Um, what what are we looking? So it looks to me like the lead players are going to get a little bit of little bit of taste of what rhythm players usually contend with. Yeah, I mean they're pretty much the same part except for the um, there's Bills like a yeah. Well, no, no. There's there's a little uh, bridge section. Okay. Um, there are two guitar parts in the song um, that are kind of panned left to right. Okay. Um, 
And I think it probably, if I had to guess, it's one of the guitar players is playing one of the parts and the other is playing the other part. Uh, they're practically identical, but they're different enough to where it gives it a really cool, almost kind of 12-string sounding effect. Yeah. Uh, and that is a... Um, uh, trick used by a lot of producers, a lot of guitar heavy records, you may hear a guitar part, but really it's three or four different guitar parts stacked on top of each other with kind of different to frequency to ranges. To fill in all mm -hmm. those, those gaps. Okay. Yeah. So what I did for this song, rather than doing each part differently to a T, mm -hmm. I kind of did an amalgamation okay. of the two and picked the part that seemed the most prominent because if you played either part exact, it wouldn't quite sound like the song, if y that makes sense. You'd be missing some of the key little yeah sections. and they're so different they're, so, they're so similar that i didn't think it made sense to do two completely different arrangements sure, so. sure. and uh yeah. this song originally does it have a bass guitar part no so this is a bass guitar part that yeah. you created for this song yeah. uh what is what is this bass part kind of based on is this oh, whole, the whole cloth or is it yeah just kind of root chord movement okay. i kept it simple okay cool. yeah cool um and Emmy, mm -hmm. so you've you've had some time to work with it. Yes. Uh, how did Andrew do in crafting this bass part? <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. It's good. Good. Uh, so I think we're we're about ready to play the first song. Uh, before that, though, uh, if you have any questions for us here, make sure you reach out to UB Jurassic. That is Brian Turner. He is the community manager for Rocksmith. He's here in the chat with you, uh, and he will take your questions and uh, deliver them across the uh, across the internet to me uh, here in San Francisco. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Sounds Close good. Let's try. I'm trying to tell you something about my life Maybe give me insight between black and white And the best thing you've ever done for me Used to help me take my life less seriously With a headache, 
Nice song. It's uh, just it's yeah. n- it's pleasant. It's nice. It's kind of it's active. It's a great Heavy. tune too. Um, so I saw you. So you're playing with a pick. Yeah. Um, do 100 percent accuracy on bass. Yeah. Ooh. Look at that. Uh, now I I know you've been thinking about a new bass. Maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is a, is an acoustic the way to go for you? It might be, but <laughs> no, not right now. Uh, yeah. Hey Andrew. What's up? How do you pronounce piezo? Piezo. Uh, did it? I did it right. Okay. Is, um, that what <laughs> is that what kind of pickups that bass has, or does it have something? Ye- Dan is uh, nodding. Dan so is nodding. So I think he Pietro? knows better than I do. Um. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes, we got it. We got it. Yes. Uh, that was a question from the chat. I missed who sent that one, but uh, yes, that uh, that bass does use piezo pickups. It has a uh, little battery-powered uh, volume control at the top. It's an acoustic there electric. You go. Up there. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's really fun to play that one. Yeah. Um, I'm glad it made its debut. Me too. Yeah, me too. It's cool. Uh, the thing sounds really good on plug too. Like there aren't a lot yeah, of yeah. Um, acoustic basses that sound good for slap, but that thing oh, yeah. you yeah. can yeah. slap and it, and I could sort of feel the mm-hmm. the the uh, acoustic. So it made him nervous in my head. <laughs> yeah, Andrew <laughs> <laughs> Inter- was kind of nervous before. Well, uh, I just you know I didn't want it to be. It might, it might get picked up on the microphone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm, um, a, I'm OCD about sound. So, so, uh, yeah. so the pa- do any of these use any finger picking, or are these all meant to be picked y- well uh any of the songs at all today or that, that you know that you aware? i think aware. a couple of them are finger picked um i thought so there's that verse section or that, that bridge section which is deceptively difficult to play uh is the part with the hammer-ons is yeah it gets kind of it kind of sneaks up can I, can I get a little volume dan it's that part well oh. <laughs> it's <a> okay um <laughs> so uh it's the part that goes like um, and this took this part took me like hours to figure out because uh, it's so hard to hear on the recording. Yeah. But there was a lot of live footage. Or I finally found live footage that kind of supported what I thought it was. Um, this part can be played both finger picked or with a pick. Yeah. It's uh, the part that's like it's really out of tune. Um. But that part's easier to do finger pick. Okay. Okay. So. In an ideal world, you might be able to just switch. toss your pick and, and, and switch. Yeah, I like to put it in the middle of my two fingers That's here. Right. So we haven't talked we haven't talked about that in a while. Yeah, you, if you want to do like a hybrid style picking, or you do want to switch between like st- pick strumming and finger style, mm-hmm. uh, how do you tend to like hide the the pick? I do a little bit of both. Uh, when I'm doing the kind of Chet Atkins stuff, I'll do hybrid picking because that way I can kind of. Um, you know, get that kind of chug chug sound. But for this type of thing, since it's more open, I would probably uh, just quickly. You can do it within like a span of an eighth or a sixteenth note. You're just replaying. Then you put it right here. So no folding it up in your finger like some some players do. Well, this right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah between between not uh, because what I've seen sometimes uh-huh. is uh, when the when the pick sort of gets. Oh, up. that's cool. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that, yeah, I, that I, I I don't do that it's one. Like but a magic. If I if my sleight of hand was better. <laughs> You'd all be very impressed. <laughs> or maybe, maybe for the VOD, we can go back and add some special Encore. effects to make it just... Encore. Encore. <laughs> Encore. Hide your pick. Uh, is this your pick? Is this your pick? Uh, <laughs> speaking of encores, uh, Andrew, you were here with us uh, this past Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did, uh, I think appropriately enough for a, a folk pack, uh, or, or folk rock song pack, uh, we had an encore stream about songwriting. Yeah. Uh, we had one last month. We had another one this month. This one was a much more sort of uh, uh, practical like, lab situation. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, check it out on Video On Demand. It should be here on Twitch or on YouTube if you're watching there. Uh, if it's not, it will be very soon. Yeah. Yeah, there's a c- bunch of things we talked about, actually, in that songwriting lab that are used in this particular song. Anything you... Uh, any d- is there one thing you would want to bring up about that? Can I say two? Okay, I'll give you two. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Okay. cool. So number one, we talked a lot about, like... Uh, uh, this tuning's driving me crazy. <laughs> um, uh, we talked about um, taking a chord and then just moving around a finger. Yeah. And you may notice the like main motif from the song. 
you're, you're, you're keeping that idea consistent. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the idea is present, but it's not being played consistently. You're, there's intentional uh, deviation mm -hmm. in how it's Yeah, utilized. so they're just kind of lifting up their fingers and taking that D chord, moving it around. They do that with the C chord as well. Just taking that middle finger off. That's a really common device. Um, and then the second thing that we talked about um, was if you have like a G, C, and D chord, yeah. you can just keep your uh, top two fingers here. Just lock so place. Yeah, so if there wasn't a capo, it, it would be on the third fret. But since there's a capo, it's on the fifth fret. So I got my G chord here, um, A chord, just leaving these two fingers here, C chord, and D chord here. The top two notes stay the same. It gives it a kind of drone effect, which is really cool. And one thing, one thing about uh, the the Rocksmith uh, UI, the the user interface there. Uh, if you are playing multiple chords and some one or more of your fingers are staying in position, there will be two rings around those fingers mm -hmm. to let you know you can just keep those there. Those mm -hmm. aren't moving. Everyth something else will be moving to change the chord that's coming. Uh, I have another question. I don't know if we have an answer for this here. Uh, this might be more of a thing for uh, Brendan West, our tone chaperone. Uh, but Burden or one two one wants to know uh, if there was a new acoustic tone created for this song. Yeah, so we have di we have new tones uh, created for every song. Um, uh, they're based on a standard set of tones, um, but all of them are created to fit the particular song. Uh, so in this case, it was um, yeah. I think he probably used a, the same basic amp style as he would yeah. in a different acoustic song, although I could be wrong, but I, I would assume that. Um, but uh, He's here in chat, which I don't, I don't think he is, but... Uh, nope, he's not here today. Uh, <laughs> but maybe that's, that's something we can try to look into about uh, kind of what makes this tone uh, maybe a bit more uh, unique amongst other acoustic tones. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it seemed like it was to my ears a little bit, um, uh, a little warmer, which I liked. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Probably and probably something to distinguish the 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 lead path from the rhythm path. No, they're the same tone. Are they the same tone? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and Amy, did you play with a pick on this one? No, I did no. not. Okay, you're just you're holding one now. Yeah, I did got was that Was that your <laughs> magic trick? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got okay. angsty, so right. I was like, I don't <laughs> just don't even have my hands. Uh, Amy is getting angsty, so uh, we will go ahead and uh, move <laughs> on to our first Ernie Ball prize pack of the day. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Amy, for joining us. Cool. I was uh, starting to get angsty too. So okay, angsty. Are you getting <laughs> angsty, angsty or ang anxiety? I don't Anx know. Anxious. Anxious. You're yeah. so you're anxious. Anx you're antsy, yeah. and I'm angsty. I had a lot of tea earlier, so. Yeah, I had a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, um, I don't know how to follow that up, so I'm just going to move on to the Ernie Ball prize pack. Uh, if you want Free a party. chance to win uh, the first Ernie Ball prize pack of the day, uh, please listen to what UB Jurassic is saying in the chat right now. Uh, once more, that is Brian Turner. He is based in North Carolina and is the community manager for Rocksmith. Uh, he will lead you on your way down the path to uh, possibly receiving this Ernie Ball prize pack, which includes two sets of strings, uh, one six string set for your six string guitar, one four string set for your four string bass. Uh, you're gonna get 12 Ernie Ball picks. Uh, you're gonna get three picks from us here at Rocksmith. Uh, you're going to get a bright red Ernie Ball guitar strap. Uh, you're gonna get a package of Wonder Wipes, uh, which can help you polish and clean, maintain your guitar's body, fretboard, and uh, strings to keep those lasting longer and uh, sounding nicer. Uh, you're also gonna get an Ernie Ball peg winder, uh, which uh, you can use to quickly uh, attach those strings that I mentioned earlier in this giveaway. So please listen to what Yubi Jurassic is saying in the chat right now. Uh, and you don't forget that you must be following the channel in order to win. Uh, if you are not following the channel, uh, your name uh, will, will likely be omitted. Uh, so just give it a follow. And uh, that's, that's all we ask really. Uh, and you type in exclamation raffle. I kind of just gave away uh, what you Jurassic was telling you to do. Follow exclamation raffle, and that's that's how you're gonna win. And you only need to enter once. Uh, if you if you type it, if you type exclamation raffle multiple times, it's only gonna take one entry. Uh, any any entries past the first will be ignored. That's a Mubot thing, not an us thing. But we support that decision uh, by Mubot to keep it at one entry per player, uh, per viewer. Uh, so yeah, well good luck on that. If you win, you will get a whisper from UB Jurassic asking for your name, your shipping address, and your telephone number. We need all of that information in order to get your prize to you. Uh, and we do ship outside of the US, but if you are outside of the US, 
uh, please make sure you split up your address line by line uh, so that I don't mess it up uh, and get it returned to me because I don't I don't like it when these get returned it happens rarely uh, for, for, for a couple of small reasons but uh, if that is something that happens uh, we do reach out to the winners uh, and try to make it right. Uh, speaking of making it right, uh, right now I'd like to introduce our next set of guests in this uh, Indigo Girls Song Pack stream. Hello, Greg Studley. Hey there, Doug. How's it going? Going good. Good, good. That is also not an acoustic guitar. That's correct. Or an acoustic bass. Rye, how's it going? What's up, Doug? Two of our note trackers here to play some Indigo Girls. Uh, you are playing Power of Two. The two of us. The two of you are playing Power of Two. Now that seems... Like a like a bold statement. Well, there's no power chords in the song. No so power. So what? It's so it's what, it's so what does it mean? It's, <laughs> a, it's acoustic. There's no power chords. What could that possibly? I was, just wait, mean? I was waiting for the drive, <laughs> and it just wasn't there for um, me. Yeah. So you also you note tracked this song. Yeah. Uh, now uh, Andrew, uh, when he was playing closer to fine, uh, said that uh, the the rhythm and lead paths were were very similar, with only a few uh, deviations between the two. Is that also true of Power of Two? Well, that's interesting. I, I think we looked at this a few days ago, but the the data has since slipped from my brain. <laughs> a lot's happened. Uh, I'd it's say been no. a long couple you say days. You say no? Because the bass part is all over the map. It's really difficult. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is probably the, the so most active bass Yeah, part. I don't see how the guitar part would move around that much. Well, I, I know they mm. do sometimes have a tendency, just from being familiar with the band and watching sure. some live stuff, Uh they will sometimes use two different capo positions yeah in their in, in playing their songs cuz uh, and that actually gives you some really interesting sounds cuz if if someone's a capo 2 and someone else is a capo 5 but you're playing the same chords not meaning the same yeah. chord shapes but if both of you are playing what is ultimately you know uh, an a chord you have two different sounds for your a because right. your notes are in different orders and you're getting different frequencies by the capo being in two different places. So it actually really, you know, fattens up the sound of yeah. what's going on with the guitar part. So, so when you have two guitar playing. layers, it's a, it's a really great recording technique. And I believe they do it live as well sometimes. And that I don't remember if this was one right. of the tracks where they did or not because, again... It's been a while. It's been a long few these, days. These, these songs get, no, these get, they get charted months before they get oh played yeah. here, months oh before yeah. they're released. If you uh, didn't have that small piece of information, you would drive somebody crazy trying to figure out those chords. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you try and play this without a capo, you will... Uh, right. Just, just don't do it to yourself. It's uh, <laughs> you love yourself more than that. So I think, I believe all three songs in this pack uh, use a capo. You're not... Oh. You're not, I think... I think I'm, I'm just... I'm, I, I I'm believe that's true. I'm not uh, 100%, but this one at least... Uh, the this one two and closer to fine. It does both use capos. Uh, now, and I know we, we we mentioned capos whenever they pop up. So let's go ahead and keep that train a rolling and talk about what capos do for people who may not know at home. What is a capo? Sure. So uh, the best way to explain a capo is it moves the nut of the guitar where where the strings essentially begin. So. Uh, if you clamp a capo down here, like I have on fifth fret, you're essentially shortening the string. Because now you could say, well, the string's uh, accessible length is now from the fifth fret to the bridge. And by doing that, you're actually making the string go higher because now it is shorter as if you were playing at the fifth fret. Yeah. But it allows you to, you know, do things that would be, you know, sometimes extremely difficult, like even playing this. Well, there's no volume, but you can see I'm playing a G chord. But to play this G chord with four fingers, if this is not on, yes. is actually really difficult because you have to bar over this and catch two string, you know, two strings with your pinky. But man, you put a capo on and yeah, you're and good to go. And you can also do uh, some some of the sort of pedal tone or, or droney things by playing higher up on the fretboard, but leaving those open strings at the fifth fret or wherever you have your capo. Yes, most certainly. Yeah. Which because you'll, you'll get those open frequencies that normally will fit the key. Right. And so since you're getting open notes that are in the key, then if you're playing up here and you get some of those, it actually adds a really nice tone that you really can't get otherwise because you can't play it 12 and 5 simultaneously. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, well, it's difficult. And it's not, diffi I it's won't say you can't do it because I'm practical. sure there's a YouTube video. In, in these songs, it would not be practical. No, say that. it would not. Um, and, Ry, you mentioned that the, uh, the bass part of this one jumps around a lot. What do we have to look forward to or to look out for in this song? A lot of clams <laughs> by me. <meeting> mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's a really cool bass line. It's, it moves around, and there's 
very a lot of like little minor variations yeah. throughout the song, so it doesn't get played the same way. <coughs> like every iteration is not exactly the same. Okay, um, which seems like <laughs> and it was it's, uh, tough to read too. Sorry okay. about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and th those minor variations. So when you're when you're charting a song uh, in a lot of music, uh, Greg Southey also here for uh, Monday's encore stream. Um, it, when you are, uh, I lost where I was going with that. When uh, you're charting a song. When you're charting a song. Now you know how I felt about <laughs> about the tuning <laughs> thing. Uh, the capo. Yeah. So <laughs> so songs songs are built on, uh, in in large part, most often repetition. You're going to have repetition oh yeah throughout the song and when you're charting i assume repetition makes things simpler it it does so um from tracker. from a transcription point of view once you've figured out a section and that same section pops up again later you can run under the assumption that it is very similar yep. and use that as a starting point because if you if you attack a similar section like you've never heard it before yeah you're going to end up finding that a lot of the material that you would write out very often is going to be the same. Now, some some players, some styles of music will actually vary things a lot. Yeah. But that's actually less common uh, than people reusing information that they've done before. A lot of times as songs move forward, what players will do is they'll take what they used in a previous section and enhance it to make yeah. the song kind of sound like it's building. Um, and by enhancing it, they're usually using the the core ideas that they used before, maybe with, you know, like he's saying, some extra fills in between, or, you know, maybe playing the same line but playing it higher up. Sure. Yeah, all of these ideas are things that you can do to enhance the sound of what you've already done. And uh, to return again to something that we talked about on Monday, uh, when, you, when you are using repetition in, in writing a song or playing a song, uh, a large part of that is to uh, get the listener to to believe they know what's coming so that later on you might be able to uh, supplant that information and trip them up in a fun way, an interesting way that makes music enjoyable. Yes, and, and also people do enjoy being correct. And yeah. therefore when, when the listener expects to hear something, and then they do, they, they're like, oh it, yeah. It, it actually, in our brains, it's like, oh, I, I was right. And, right. and I knew what was going to be there, so like, and sure enough, it was there. But like, you can also surprise people, which they can also find enjoyable. Like, so it all depends on how you want to, you know, interact with the listener. Like, I've, I've heard songs before that, you know, I could, I could start singing along to the song the first time I heard it. Just because they, they've sort of built it in such a way that I know it's coming. And that can, that can be a lot of fun as a listener. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it gives you familiarity so right from the is, start. It is, it is an option. Mm -hmm. when, uh, when crafting your own songs. But right now, uh, let's go ahead and take a listen to The Power of Two. Sorry, not The Power of Two. We'll take a listen to Power of Two. Once more, if you have any questions, uh, hit up UB Jurassic in the chat. <laughs>
I was just gonna let that ride out. Oh were, yeah, <laughs> that was really fun. Um, <laughs> uh, so I had a how how familiar are you with uh, folk or folk rock? Probably played it for a long time. Long time. So okay. it's never really been my my primary focus. genre that sure. I, I ever played in. But I think the first gigs I ever had were you know playing, mind you, lead guitar, but for a like folk and country yeah. artist. Yeah. So right. Yeah, there's there's definitely been a history of it. So I noticed uh, in both uh, the song "Power of Two and "Closer to Fine," uh, there was uh, there were several instances of using uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs, like kind of within a chord or with double stops. Uh, is that something that's pretty common in folk or folk rock? You could say it's common for the lead guitar parts okay. to do that. Uh, most commonly in folk or folk rock, the what you would call the kind of more stable rhythm guitar part yeah. is really just going to be using open chords or some variations of them. Yeah. Like Andrew was talking to about last time about kind of, you know, space. taking a chord and maybe doing a hammer on within a chord. Yeah. Um, but as far as kind of moving, you know, double stops around, I mean, that's, that's going to be more lead line, but a lot of it is based off of open strings. And uh, do either of you have any suggestions for, uh, yes. Th okay. Uh, <laughs> rapid fire chord switches. Rapid fire chord, like how to how to handle them? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I I have an answer, but I would like to hear yours. I mean, there's there's usually the go ahead and practice it method. That was that was <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, so if we were to take like this song, yeah. How, like how would you? There's go not about that many that? quick. There was, there are some quick switches, but honestly, use riff repeater to your advantage. Like. You could always put on a metronome and put it slower than the song, but then you can't hear the song. Right. Uh, and you also have no cue of, of what was being played. But use riff repeater. I mean, slow it down to what might be a more comfortable range of like 80 or 90%. Sure. You, sl you slow things down too much, it starts to lose the groove of it because everything's too far apart. But slow things to 80 or 90%. And Where it still may be like challenging but doable. Challenging is okay, but, it, but if you are actually having trouble doing something. Slow it down a little bit more. Slow down to the point where you can play it right. That's okay. that is always going to be my answer to. I can't play it. What do I do? The answer is slow it down so you can actually play it correctly. So that you're actually practicing it correctly. There's no point in, in playing something wrong in repetition because it never actually helps you play it right. Right. Because all you're doing is teaching yourself what not to do over and over Re again. Reinforce the sloppy playing. Yeah. And it, if you're yeah. really having trouble with like <coughs> a certain spot, you you can even just go offline and just practice the muscle memory. You know, for for that chord so change because that's what you got to. I mean, really, so you you're have playing the a C records. augmented <laughs> <laughs> to. Uh, oh, I don't oh. know. <laughs> I mean, I like what's that. the metal mix? <laughs> <laughs> Rewind to the metal mix. Um, great. Well, thank. Can, can uh, I point out yes. an interesting thing? Because th this actually, this song ties into a question that we got at the encore. Oh, sure. That uh, I don't think we had an answer for, which was um, what what well we had an answer, which was. Uh, can you start a song not on the one chord? This and we said, yeah, you certainly can. You're free to do anything that sounds good. Yeah. But this song actually does that. Okay. So this song is regularly in the key of C, which is played with like a G shape. But the first chord of the chord progression is the five chord oh. inverted. So to, to kind of explain, this is what you would, uh, if you're thinking of it down here, it's like a D over F sharp shape moved up here, which ends up becoming a G over B when it's moved up with the capo. 
Uh, G happens to be the fifth note in the key of C, so C, D, E, F, G. So in the key of C, it's the five chord. And the beginning of the song, they're always okay. going five, one. They're not going one to something else. They're constantly starting on that five chord. I don't so think I ever realized that. A great well, it works great for yeah. the song. It, it gives you a little bit of tension to start, which immediately is released yeah. You know uh, when it goes to the one chord. So this is a great example of how that... Uh, can be played. Perfect. Thank you for bringing that up. I really appreciate that. Happy to. And uh, thank both uh, Greg Sully and Ryan Kin for joining us on this one right now. Uh, we are going to do two things. One, we are going to watch a video. Uh, this is from a couple of years ago, back in uh, uh, 2016, uh, during the fifth anniversary of Rocksmith. Uh, we had a few people come down uh, to play live, a few Rocksmith players come down play live at Slim's here in San Francisco. Uh, and this is a video of one of those players, uh, sort of their journey getting out here and playing, uh, performing uh, for the first time in front of people. Uh, while that's going on, uh, we're going to give away five copies of this week's DLC, the Indigo Girl Song Pack on Steam. Uh, UB Jurassic is going to give away those five copies. So please watch what he's saying in chat uh, for your chance to win one of those. And we'll be back with more music right after that. I'll tell you, learning guitar in general was way out of the zone for me. It's not something I always laid awake at night hoping I could play music one day. I play it because it is hard. Hi, I'm Miles Bristow. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. I uh, have three children, a wife, a beautiful wife, and um, I play guitar. At least now I do. Now, music was sort of a, not something I grew up with. Grew up in a house with no radio, TV, not allowed to go to the movies, no dancing. A coworker said, you gotta go see this band. I looked up at them, they were all in their 40s, like me, and I said, you know, that's, that's what I wanna do. I wanna learn guitar, I wanna play music. When I first turned on the game, it kinda said, this is how to hold a pick. This is what the neck does, you know, I, I didn't know any of these things, so it spoon-fed the, the notes, so it would be like, every four beats, or whatever it is I could handle, it would just give me that, plus a little bit of extra. Once I was into this contest and realized it was a contest and decided to, to do it, um, I discovered this community. So this experience has given me access to a larger community, which is really why I think people stay in it. When I had my first Skype call with, with Anthony, it was, um, so one of you asked me, have you tried master mode? And I hadn't. But for these songs, I turned on master mode. I started using the game to learn a song. Coach Anthony had given me some ideas on just repeating some sections and kind of committed to memory. What I'm gonna do now is turn the game off. I'm actually just gonna try to play it. So I did stuff like I was playing and then I absolutely just stopped, like mid-song but I realized that I had missed a chord or I missed a note or absolutely blanked out and forgot like what song I'm even playing, like I couldn't even continue. So there were two things I went with when I picked the songs for this contest. Number one, lead, absolutely. Probably because it's hard, right? And I did pick some pretty ambitious songs. Number two, there were songs that I've enjoyed listening to. I, I like them, so I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play that. And that's really what this, what this performance is all about. So sound check wasn't perfect. Um, on a scale of one to 10, I feel <laughs> 10 excited, about a nine terrified. I got some good advice downstairs in the performer's green room. They said, you already know the song. You played it six million times. Your brain's getting in the way and you're overthinking it. Just go up there and play. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna come up on stage and I'm just gonna play. when I was downstairs. When I got on stage, it was like a whole different person. I had this chill that went up my spine, and then I just I just went out, and I, I don't even know what I did. It was 
It was an out-of-body experience. I just want to say thank you, Rocksmith, for making this impossible dream come true. I just, I just can't even believe it. What a night. And welcome back to this week's Rocksmith Developer Stream, where we are taking a look at the Indigo Girls Song Pack. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, I remain Doug Lilly, the host for today and uh, your community developer on Rocksmith. Uh, right now, I would like to introduce our next set of guests who are not going to play Indigo Girls. Uh, Jared McAdams. Hey, man. What are you doing? I... Uh, I you asked. You, I, I asked. I, I asked. I asked him to be here. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, and Anthony Martinez, welcome to both of you. Thank you very much, and hello to both of you. We got Jared on stream twice in one week. How is that possible? That is insane. Uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. Uh, so you were here because uh, I came last minute and asked you to play. Uh, Jim Croce's Time in a Bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, Super straightforward, easy charts. Yeah, so yep. <laughs> nothing, not to no, uh, <laughs> nothing tricksy. No, uh, incredibly challenging uh, path. And because I sort of sprung this on you last minute, uh, you'll be playing the rhythm path at 40%. 40 percent. 40 40 Just like third grade. Which is right, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, Anthony Martinez, you actually note tracked this one. I did, yeah. Uh, and I think I performed it with Shane when uh, oh, yeah. the, uh, the week we released it, and yeah, I, I played the long. yeah I played the lead chart, and I think Shane played rhythm. Is that is that why you chose not to <laughs> play it today? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to play a different arrangement. I I tend to do that if I replay a that song, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll take on another yeah. arrangement, especially one that wasn't featured. I don't believe bass was uh, that time. Yeah, if, uh, if, on if the Shane played rhythm with you, then yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, so welcome back. We've Thank been talking you. about the encore. Uh, I heard stream it came up a couple of times. A few times. Yeah. Uh, Jared McAdams also on this week's uh, and last month's encore streams. Two in a row. Man, I'm I'm glad I'm glad you're back. Yeah, <laughs> uh, in the hatch. Um, so Jim Croce's Time in a Bottle. Uh, mm -hmm. I did not update my notes, so it says it came out in 2006, which is not correct. Uh, this oh, is oh a that sounds right. This is a so, yeah, is this a yeah. 60s. Is that vintage? Sixty-eight. Like, oh, is it that? I would have thought seventies. I 70s, was thinking, but I I, yeah, know. yeah. I thought it was. I thought it was seventies. Um, seventy-one. Seventy-one. Sounds 71. very correct. To okay. Me. Seventy-one. I'll go with good. that, Andrew. We'll go with seventy-one. All right. <laughs> we've decided. And some uh, buzzers. Through, through, uh, no. Oh. Uh, through consensus, we have decided this song came out in nineteen seventy-one. That's how uh, all the well, metadata I'll, I'll that find out appears that's true. in the game <laughs> is generated. Like, hey, what do you think? Two thousand four. Yeah. Jim Croce. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Thank you very much for playing. So let's go ahead and let's let's Should why we just why wait? Let's, let's jump in. Dive let's in. jump in. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, think. Are you doing finger picking? I yeah. I'm using. I guess you. I'm, I guess you better pick free. If I could save time in a bottle. First thing that I'd like to do is to save every day till eternity passes away just to spend them with you. If I could make days last forever, if words could make wishes come true, I'd save every day like a treasure and then again I would spend them with you but there never seems to be enough time to do the things you want to do once you find them I've looked around enough to know that you're the one I want to go Except for the memory of how they were answered by you But there never seems to be enough time to do the things you want to do once you find them I've 
looked around enough to know you're the one I want to go through time I love that song. Mystery. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so we we've been uh, referring to Indigo Girls songs that we've we've been playing today, sort of interchangeably between folk and folk rock. Mm -hmm. uh, w if if we're going to sort of nitpick with the genres, uh, where would you place Jim Croce's "Time in a Bottle"? Probably within the same genre, so between folk and folk rock, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. depending on I guess where your starting point is. Mm -hmm. This is definitely pretty pretty far for me from the 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 rock end of the spectrum right as mm -hmm. opposed to like a bad bad Leroy Brown right. or another <laughs> right. um, another Jim Croce yeah, number I, oh I, totally I, I feel like the 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 presence of uh, I don't know if there was some some organ in there uh uh kind of maybe tilt a little bit towards the the rock end how would you define how would you define folk music Heavy duty, man. Ooh, Ooh, yeah, on the spot. Um, Could have prepped you for that one, but I didn't. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Doug. Well, huh? I think I think <laughs> you can think of it in a, in a very broad sense, uh, mm -hmm. as as in a sort of ethno-musicological sense of uh, you know the the music that is the product of of untrained musicians who who uh, play socially and and not mm -hmm. not professionally. Um, but I think you can sort of identify this thread of folk rock that that starts in the mm -hmm. late 50s and early 60s and is you know it's acoustic it guitars uh -huh. uh, and it's singer it's songwriter style chords, it's sort singer like songwriter maybe extending from like beat almost or is that parallel did it run parallel to beat oh yeah i think i think that the uh, the 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 folk revival movement of the you know, early '60s, late '50s, early '60s is a direct outgrowth of the beat beat movement. Okay, but, um, and that's and a deeper conversation. And I think I feel like typically when we refer to folk, usually we're referring to American folk music. I think so, but but I I would I would distinguish between there are sort there of like like American folk music, like fiddle fiddle tunes and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, minstrel show songs and things from the from the that we think of well, as like part of the nineteenth century yeah. tradition versus this sort of folk revival movement of like the Kingston Trio and and things like that and and then later on you know Bob Dylan and things mm -hmm. in the sixties where it's sort of pulling bits and pieces out of that but really with a a very contemporary and modern spin eventually mm -hmm. right with sort of like like pop music uh like music made by people yeah, who it's are a aware fusion kind of, of yeah thing. yeah it's sort of like using rock as a blanket term for mm -hmm. everything within it you know everything sure. that influences a certain sound that checks out all right thank you both thank very you. much thank for you Doug. uh thank you. we are in thank you for answering my my on the spot questions sure. uh right now uh we are going to take a look at a few things uh in case you missed them uh, l not too long ago, uh, we released the Cat Stevens song pack, uh, that included Father and Son, Morning Has Broken, and Wild World. Uh, that song, song pack, uh, came out, uh, pretty recently back in, uh, April of this year of 2019. Uh, we also released fairly recently, back in, uh, July of 2018, uh, the Joni Mitchell song pack, uh, which includes A Case of You, Big Yellow Taxi, which was almost our bonus song today and uh, both sides now. Uh, and if you're looking for some more folk or folk rock, uh, in the Rocksmith Library, uh, there was that, uh, that Jim Croce song that we just played, Time in a Bottle, which was on the 70s mix two. Uh, and we also have some Bob Dylan. Uh, there was a Bob Dylan song pack that came out way back in 2014 that included Just Like a Woman, Like a Rolling Stone, and Subterranean Homesick Blues. Uh, there was also one Rocksmith 2014 on disc Bob Dylan track, Knocking on Heaven's Door. Uh, you may be aware there are some acoustic guitars on stage. And by stage, I mean in front of the cameras. Um, <laughs> I think that one was just for me. Uh, you, you may have some guesses as it's coming. Uh, oh, oh, we've got extra bonus music. Well, uh, oh, that's a calibrate. And now we've been asked to be quiet because of the calibration. Uh, but it'll probably be loud again. Oh, no. We've still got some tuning. I've, I've kind of run out of things to banter about. Let's talk about uh, Encore. We've mentioned the Encore a few times uh, this stream. 
those are available on uh, VOD on video on demand uh, here on Twitch. If you just click videos while you're on our channel at Rocksmith Game uh, or just twitch.com slash Rocksmith Game, uh, you can find our uh, previous videos, uh, one of which uh, is the most recent Encore stream about songwriting. Uh, and we basically created a song. By we, I mean the three guests that I had on stage, not me. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I just asked questions and uh, took questions from you and sent them to the, uh, the folks making the song. But they wrote a song, more or less, uh, live on stream for you to sort of uh, follow along. And uh, speaking of following along, if you do go back and watch that video on demand for the, uh, the songwriting lab, uh, songwriting and exploration, the actual name of the, uh, the stream. Uh, there should be information there on how you can uh, basically get a template that Jared created uh, days before the stream. So you can follow along and, and work on your own chord progression uh, using a similar uh, format. Uh, and and your, your job then would be to uh, play with that format and use the circle of fifths and use what was talked about in the stream to create a different song from the one that was created here on the stream. Uh, I believe we are about ready to say hello to our final guests of the day. Uh, oh, hello. Hi. Final guest of the day. Hi. Brian Chu, to my immediate left. Yes. Welcome. That is me. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. I see you've got your sir here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the far right of the screen, Hi. Dan Emmerich, who I'm are terrified. you a deer? Why are you yeah. terrified? I'm terrified for two reasons. Okay. Three, really. One, I'm showing my legs on the stream. Two, okay. uh, my wife actually is the person that got me into the Indigo Girls, and she's watching. Yeah. So yeah. I have to not mess this up. Sure. And third, uh, this particular guitar is not mine. Uh, in a last-minute uh, uh, moment of generosity, Anthony Martinez offered me yeah. his, his personal Taylor 114 CE. Oh, so I'm like, oh God! Not only see, do I have to play it right, but I also see, I don't want to wreck it or there's nothing, nothing like that. Securing it to you? Nope, it's nope. It's free, free floating, floating, as mm -hmm. as acoustics mm -hmm. sometimes are. So yeah, not Maybe. so I have to I have to play right. I have to treat the guitar with respect, and I have to uh, have shame for my pale skin sure. all at the same that time. That sounds good. So. Maybe you shouldn't have brought an acoustic. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. the thing I sh uh, I did wrong. Uh, no, no, no. I I, uh, I talked Dana to bring an acoustic. No, I right actually I, I really wanted to, and oh, I, I thought, thought everybody would be doing an acoustic. I thought you were getting out of it. I thought you were trying to get out of it. No, not at all. No, I was I was like, no, hey, okay. I think that's cool, and like nobody else was. Eh, you know, like, again, the semi hollows kind of get you there, but I just figured, why not? We have sure. some lovely acoustics around the office, yeah. and this is one of the loveliest. Uh, but you know, thank you, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the two of you are playing Galileo. Yes. Uh, which Brian Shu, you did. Note track? I did, indeedy. I, I always ask it as if it's a question. <laughs> when you know. <laughs> when I know. <laughs> it's I know. on the list. I know it's there. <laughs> um, uh, so what what do we have to look forward to? And it does use a capo. Yes. That was my guess. So all three songs this mm -hmm. week capos do use capos. everywhere. Capos mandatory. And in different places. Unless you're on bass. Because That's you're on a custom tuning. Oh, yep. yeah. Custom and tuning I'm and capo. I'm on E standard with a capo on the first fret, which makes it in F. Mm -hmm. And the rhythm part is very straightforward. I, I mean, I never knew that they were using capos so much because, yeah. again, being a fan and, and, you know, my wife says, how do you play that song? I'm like, I have no idea because if you're not <laughs> using a capo, right. you don't know. And then, of course, you throw in funky tunings. And I'm like, I, mm -hmm. pfft, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it really does a lot for um, creating a really jangly, droney sound. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and the the tuning in particular. So my 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 tuning is really weird. It's dead gack, <laughs> dead gack, dead gack. Yeah, so it's dead gad with the top string tuned down to a C, okay, so a whole step down. Is the or I mean two whole steps down. Yeah, okay. Yes. And then, and then uh, the it's dead gack, or but then then and is is there B? The B is still a B. I thought the B was tuned up to a C. Isn't it C C? Do we know? Does anybody know? I, I don't think, think it's C C. I, th I think it's regular. Yeah, I think it's dead. I think it's, I think it's dead back. gack. Oh no, this might. I think it's. This is a regular. I think it's B C. Yeah, this is a Somebody's BC. probably telling us some. Okay, so right it's dead gack. Uh, yeah, dead yeah. Bick. dead gack. Okay, uh, yeah, GBC. there you go. G B C. Okay. Yeah. So how did you figure that one out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and it, when you were note when you were. I don't think I, I, I did not transcribe this one. Okay. So, um, I forgot who. Who did? Was it Rye? It might have been Rye. Someone okay. figured it out. Sam is usually our king of alternate tuning, so I wouldn't be surprised if he figured it out. Um, luckily, there's a lot of video of um, Indigo Girls live playing it. 
So, um, so basically, you have okay. So that shape needs to sound like this. So how do we tune this to make that shape sound like this? Yeah, I always find alternate tunings to. That's like one Some of my biggest board. weaknesses as far as like transcription because I never play an alternate <laughs> tuning. It's the E standard or nothing. Yeah, I. Well, none of the music I play <laughs> requires alternate <laughs> tunings. And then like you Bloody know, that. adding <laughs> a, adding a capo on top of that is just yeah weird. So um, yeah. I don't know. Okay. He's just really, those guys are really good at figuring that out. And sure. then, yeah. And uh, Dan, you're playing the rhythm path. Today. Yeah, I'm playing the straight up rhythm path, uh, which, like I said, is, is much simpler than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. But is very satisfying as a result. So, cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, and we're, since we're, we were talking about the encore earlier, right, that you guys did earlier yeah. um, this week, uh, changing tunings is a great way of, like, kind of getting getting outside of the box and, like, just playing with sounds that you've never experimented with before and you might even find like you can write a whole song with just using one finger and moving it around or something like that right because you're getting a different yeah core. yeah yeah that makes can i can i use the joni mitchell quote again sure. sure joni mitchell once said she says she likes alternate tuning she likes to twiddle the pegs and then open it up to the universe right which i thought was an incredible <laughs> like you know it's it's basically like yeah. jumping off a musical cliff and right. like you don't know what you're going to explore but you have to be willing to be like oh okay sure just pure yeah. exploration and write pure everything down yeah, <laughs> yeah or write, write everything down and or record it right. as you're playing it mm -hmm. uh, so you don't because if you do yeah. find something magical no you still have <laughs> to write it down because i've i've recorded things oh, i'm yeah, like yeah, oh yeah. my god what am i hearing and i can't reproduce it and i know it's me yeah, I guess so. When now, I, when I record <laughs> things like little riffs and stuff, I, s I shout into the uh, okay, there this is in D, uh, <laughs> it's sort of like a C shape, and it's up on the you know, and I'll just do like dumb person way to write music, but you know, it works, uh, yeah, it does, yeah, cool. Uh, well, let's go and take a listen to Galileo, one of three songs on the Indigo Girl song pack. I'm gonna mess this up way more than you are, cool, okay, <laughs> so you're on, you're playing at 100%. <laughs> we both are, I think. Wow. Yeah. You were hot. I am. I'm going to be drowned down. Just down. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Galileo's head was on the block. The crime was looking up the truth. And as the bombshells of my daily fears explode, I try to trace them to my youth And then you had to bring a free incarnation Over a couple of beers the other night And now I'm serving time for mistakes Made by the number in another lifetime How long till my soul gets in love?
some incredibly fun looking chord shapes in that. Yeah, I mean, and they're not that hard. There's only three or four chords that you have to know. There are a couple of bar chords. For people that have sure. trouble with bar chords, it's good practice. But, you know, most of that is is sliding up and doing this little partial chord on the top four yep. strings. We That's did equally bad or good. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> hey, there we go. We're going to be superstars. What are you talking You're about? We're both going to be superstars. <laughs> yeah. I haven't been that nervous performing anything really? since, like, last year around this really? time when we were in front of a symphony orchestra. Uh, like that's that's the level of nerves okay. that I have right now. Interesting. Yeah. Are you okay? I'm all right. Okay, I'm gonna good, be okay. Good. You did. Good. I don't know. What does my wife say Look. in the chat? Catch out. Uh, She's in the chat. Did she say I did okay? Because if she said uh, I did okay, I can come home. She left two and a half minutes ago. Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't see her. Uh, oh, you did good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. There you go. I need uh, your validation, <laughs> honey. Uh, so we were talking about uh, this. You, you mentioned this earlier, and I, I, I saw that a lot of this uh, in the lead path. Um, and I, I, I made this reference earlier. Uh, correct me if I'm using the wrong uh, terminology. Uh, pedal tones, like drone sounds, the just the open strings that sort yeah. of remain open despite mm -hmm. the other changes in your, your chord shapes. W is that considered a pedal or considered a, just a drone? Or is there another uh, better name for that? I mean, usually a pedal tone, I think, refers to a lower I consider that string, very low, right? But I, Generally. It, it's drony, definitely okay. drony. Like... You'll hear this a lot in um, Eastern music. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. and uh, I don't know, like it's it's just a really cool jangly mm -hmm. sound, and you can take um, just different shapes and just kind of move it around and see yeah. what you get. Can, can we can we just do you want to do you want to improv so a like little bit? No, <laughs> I'm very bad. At impr I'm very bad at improvising. Uh, but like, I'll give you an example. I think like I think Dan, so Dan might no, be. No, go ahead. You, okay. you give oh, me an example. Yeah, during the during the solo. Yeah for example, is basically taking one finger and moving around. I I notated it very simple so that you didn't have to play every single note. Okay. I, I kind of condensed it because it was, it was basically showing you when, so it, when I got the transcription, it was like full chords. So I kind of simplified it so okay. that you can either hmm. strum really hard on it or or just like keep it to a minimum. So if so someone is playing lead path on this song, mm -hmm. would you recommend maybe just kind of keep it a bit looser right here? Don't be as, you don't have to be as concerned about precision? Yeah, or I would say so. I mean, like the, the transcription is a little bit simplified um, just because I, I don't like making the player overtly do everything exactly what she's you're doing. You're, you're, like you're transcribed kind of the song, not the recording of yeah, the song. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm simplifying it to its kind of base foundation so yeah like the so that solo is a really good example you could like you could just kind of go at it like that's kind of droney on top sure and then you can also have the exact same thing on the bottom all right um yeah all right cool well thank you both very much uh before we before we uh before we switch over <laughs> <laughs> um uh, we're about to have our final giveaway uh, next week. Uh, there are some fun surprises coming with the stream, one of which I want to go ahead and get out of the way right now. Uh, I won't be here next week. I'll be out of town uh, and hosting uh, in my said will be Dan Amrick. Yeah, so hi. Dan Amrick, 
back on the mic. Are you going to be as nervous? I feel like you'll be more I, comfortable. I, I'll be a hell of a lot more <laughs> comfortable. If all I have to do is talk, Doug, I think we sure. all know that I, I that's my happy place. That's my comfort Can zone. Can I make it more difficult for you? Sure, because it's going to be Halloween. So yeah. yeah, it'll be on Halloween. It'll be on Halloween, yeah. which means I suppose people expect me to be wearing some special outfit so of some sort. Just, just not. Okay, I will. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> Where um, are you going, Doug? I'm going to Disneyland. Yay! Doug is going uh, to Disneyland, which is super so awesome. The first time since I was three years old. It's a b- it's probably smaller than you remember as a result. Then. Probably. I was very yeah. small then. In the 1680s. Yeah. Sure. Why not? You're an old soul. <laughs> I am. I am. Uh, so yeah, you'll be you'll be uh, taking over hosting duties next week. Uh, but there's there are more surprises in store. Maybe. For next week. Maybe. Nobody's getting candy. No. So don't, wanna, don't get all excited. I'm You're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> you can have all the candy. Yeah, I'm going to have all the candy. Um, all but I candy. won't bring it here. Oh, maybe I'll bring in a <laughs> piece of candy. Sweet. Now I feel bad. That you I was you gloating, shoe I was candy. gloating about all this candy I'm going to eat. Um, but we'll, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll talk about more of that next week. Right now, uh, we're going to give away our final earning ball prize pack and say goodbye for now to Brian Chu and Dan Amrick. Thanks again. Uh, if you want to win the second and final for today Ernie Ball prize pack, please listen to what uh, UB Jurassic is saying in the chat. Uh, once more, that is Brian Turner. He is the community manager based in North Carolina for Rocksmith. Uh, if you win, you're going to get two sets of strings. You're going to get 12 picks from Ernie Ball plus three picks from us here at Rocksmith. You're going to get an Ernie Ball red guitar strap. You're going to get a package of Ernie Ball wonder wipes and a peg winder. All of that can be yours if you listen to what UB Jurassic says in the chat right now. Uh, if you win, he will give you a whisper in Twitch and get your information, including your name, your telephone number, and your shipping address. Once more, we do ship outside of the U.S., uh, but if you are outside of the U.S., please break up your address line by line uh, so that I don't mess it up because sometimes I uh, mess things up. I don't like it, but it's it's the truth. I'm speaking the truth. Sometimes things get messed up. So let's try to avoid that by just making it as easy on me as possible and just splitting up that address. And I thank you very much. Coming up next week, more music. What can it? What What is it? What is going to be next week's uh, song pack? Well... Uh, I'm not going to tell you now, but I can tell you now uh, where and when you can find out tomorrow morning uh, on the Rocksmith forums, which you can reach by going to rocksmith.com and clicking the link at the top for the forums. Uh, UB Jurassic will be posting uh, a new clue for next week's pack tomorrow there on the forums. Uh, He may be able to provide more information right now in chat, but I believe those will go up around uh, 10 a.m. Eastern. He can verify. Uh, That's going to be... Uh, I forgot math, 7 a.m. Pacific uh, in the U.K. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I can't do that math right now Uh, because I forget if it's 10 hours, if you're 10 hours ahead or behind. Uh, Time is confusing. It's a very complicated issue, but UB Jurassic can help you know when and where to find the clue to get more information on what's coming next week uh, in the chat right now. Uh, Also, next week... um, yeah, again, I won't be here. Uh, we already had this month's Encore stream last week. Uh, we tried to get as much notice about that as possible. If you missed it, then I apologize. But please uh, take 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 an hour or so, take an hour 15, and check out the uh, video on demand uh, here on Twitch or on YouTube uh, at your convenience. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to let us know uh, what you think of anything we're doing, let us know on social media. We are on Twitter and Instagram, at Rocksmith Game. And we are at facebook.com slash rocksmith. That will take you to your regionally appropriate rocksmith page. Uh, besides that, I believe uh, I believe that's about it. Clue tomorrow morning from RS222. Uh, stream next week, Thursday, Halloween, usual time, hosted by Dan. Uh, forums, social media, that's pretty much it. Only one thing left. Let's take one more look at the Indigo Girls song pack. And I'll see you in two weeks.
And the less I seek my source for something it is, closer I am to find. Chase all the ghosts from your head I'm stronger than the monster beneath your bed Smarter than the tricks played on your heart Look at them together, then we'll take them apart Adding up the total of all of that's true Multiply life